Uh, just now, I, I sent you the answers for first two, 10 questions, uh, just like uh, five, min five to 10 minutes ago. Right, so the reason why I didn't send them earlier because I wanted you to write them by by your own, right? So I that's why I didn't send you it earlier, right? So some of you had uh, answered the questions and uh, sent me the answers, and among them, Hiroko san. Yes, I really um, I'm really happy about you. You had done a great job. I really uh, appreciate your answers. Right, so Thank you, very much. you wrote the answers. Yeah, you had uh, written the answers very well. They were like beyond my expectations. I really appreciate your uh, effort. Right, so Thank if one student, much. yeah, it's okay. Right, so if one student can write like that, then uh, I, I you all in a similar way. Then all of you must have uh, should have the uh, that capability to write the answers. Right, so. Uh, today we are going to look at the first 10 questions, which I sent you, uh, all together I sent you 20 revision questions, right? So uh, among them, uh, we are going to discuss the first 10 questions tonight, right? So those questions are, uh, I took the, those questions from your past papers, right? From your past papers and uh, separately I sent you a sample paper, right? Uh, that sample paper also includes similar, very similar questions to the past papers, right? Uh, within this uh, 20 questions, right? So those are very similar to, uh, the sample paper questions are very similar to these 20 questions, right? So if you practice these 20 questions, right? Then you could easily go for the exam and write the answers. Right, so you should practice these 20 questions and uh, allocate the time uh, for three hours and uh, try to write the answers for the sample paper which I sent you, right? Right, so the uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is about all about revision, right? So revision is not about talking the uh, entire syllabus, right? So we are going to learn how to write the answers for the asked question. Right, so I'm going to summarize. Now I have sent you the uh, answers in detail, right? So you, you could go through those answers, right? So, and you could practice again and again. And tonight I'm going to uh, go through these 10 questions and uh, look at the summary on it, right? I'm going to summarize the answers, right? So let's uh, look at the first question. Uh, the first question is the Indus Valley civilization consisted with the progressive social conditions and the religious beliefs, right? Hope you all have the question, right? And uh, describe with reference to the archaeological evidences, right? So the uh, when, whenever you get a question, you have to highlight the important facts, right? So uh, the with the answers which I sent you now, I have highlighted the uh, important uh, uh, points of the question, right? So I, I have highlighted the Indus Valley civilization consisted with progressive social conditions and religious beliefs, right? Described with reference to archaeological evidences, right? So within this question, you have to describe about the progressive social social conditions and religious beliefs of the Indus Valley civilization, not anything else, right? Whenever you get a question like that, first you need to highlight the uh, question which is asked for, right? So in within this question, they are asked for the progressive social conditions and religious beliefs, right? So then you should have to answer, answer about, you should uh, have to describe about the progressive social conditions and the religious beliefs, that is it. Right. Okay. So before we are, now we are uh, studying for a bachelor's, right? So you are le learning for a degree. Thereby, you will get uh, essay type questions, right? So whenever you write essay, write for an essay question, uh, first try to give a brief introduction to the uh, uh, topic to the question. Now, within this question, the, they are talking about the induced 
industrially civilization right they are talking about the industrially civilization right so thereby you could give a brief uh, introduction to the industrially civilization right so uh, within my answer i have uh, i have written that uh, like uh, industrially civilization was also known as harappan civilization right and also you could uh, mention the time period which it prevailed right so it uh, it prevailed within the period of 2500 to 2700 right now they are asking about the uh, archaeological evidences for the progressive social conditions and religious beliefs thereby uh, based on archaeological so what types of archaeological evidences we have right so copper tablets terracotta figurines seals and etc right so thereby we could learn the salient features uh, of the uh, town Town planning with uh, facts when we were talking about the Indus Valley, right? Town planning, economic, social life, religious beliefs uh, about the civilization. That is a very brief introduction to the uh, Indus Valley civilization, right? So you don't have to write the exact thing, rather, you could uh, give, give your own introduction to the Indus Valley civilization, right? So whenever you get a question, uh, highlight the important highlight the points that they are asking for and the this question is about the induced valley civilization so give a brief introduction to the uh, what is induced valley civilization then go for the answer right so uh, the first they are asking about the progressive social conditions right so when we uh, talk about the pro uh, progressive social condition there were uh, several progressive social conditions like agriculture crafts uh, they domesticated animals like uh, trade was there social classes was there like uh, they had uh, uh, they improved their dress patterns and ornaments right so i have pointed out those progressive social conditions and there uh, thereby i have uh, given a small uh, descriptive introduction for each and uh, every social uh, pro progressive social condition Right. So if we take the agriculture, they harvested crops like uh, rice, wheat, barley, sesame seeds and etc. Right. So not only that, they uh, use the uh, ma they mainly harvested for their consumption and the surplus was traded. Surplus was traded. Right. So likewise, then crafts, if you take talk about the crafts, bronze work, uh, red and black, uh, black uh, potteries, bronze and copper vessels were important. Right, so then they domesticated, <coughs> they domesticated animals. Right, uh, apart from that, the trade, trade was uh, we could divide the trade of the Indus Valley civilization into two parts: internal trade and external trade. Right, so that is a part, that is one of the uh, main social uh, progressive social condition which prevailed within the Indus Valley. Right, so they not only traded internally but they ex uh, they ex uh, uh, they did external trade as well right uh, then social classes right so we could uh, identify the developments of the social classes because they had different they had different types of houses which provides that which indicates uh, us a progressive social conditions during the industrial civilization and dress patterns and ornaments, right? So throughout the time, they improved their dress patterns and ornaments, right? So the, both the women and men used to wear two pieces of clothes, upper garments and lower garments, right? So, and also not only that, they uh, started to wear ornaments to decorate themselves like necklaces, bangles, uh, finger rings, etc. right? So that is about the uh, progressive social conditions. Right? That is all about the progressive social conditions which prevailed within the Indus Valley civilization. Right, so when, uh, whenever they asked about the progressive social conditions, uh, it uh, you should indicate about the trade and agriculture. Trade and agriculture, right? And also they had uh, the urbanize. You not only that you could talk about the urbanization, urbanization within the induced valley civilization right so we will talk about the urbanization within our next question right so the that is the first part progressive social conditions right second part is the religious beliefs religious beliefs right when we talk about the religious beliefs they had several uh, 
religious beliefs. Uh, among them, they had two main deities or two main gods, male deity Paspati, female deity Mother Goddess. And apart from that, uh, the Linga worship and they further worshipped trees and animals. Right, so that is all about the religious beliefs. Right, you, you have to uh, explain them a bit in a uh, big detailed way. Right, so I don't tell you to uh, write exactly like this. Right, so you should go through this question now. When we talk about the social uh, program. Passive social can don't have to uh, stick into the this answer which I have given. Rather, you could talk about the uh, economic. You could say the economic developments within the uh, Harappan civilization, right? So you could uh, give a topic as a economic development, and there you could talk about the trade, right? And the uh, urbanization, urbanization within the. Uh, uh, induce valley civilization right so just go through the answer and uh, try to practice the answer by by your own words right don't stick into the answer which i gave you right so by going through this answer you could gain a kind of idea about how to write the answers for the asked question right so that is about the now if you take the question we have answered for the asked question Right, so whenever you saw the title Indus Valley, you can't write everything which you knew about the Indus Valley. Then you won't get marks. Rather, you should answer what they have asked for. Right, so Indus Valley civilization within this question, they have asked about the progress in social conditions and the religious pillars. Right, so thereby you have to highlight the important points within the answer and answer for that. Right, so the second question is examine with reference to archaeological uh, and literacy sources how Indus Valley civilization was uh, urbanized. Right, so the if we take the important uh, part of this question, how Indus Valley civilization was urbanized within this question. Question: They have asked about how Indus Valley civilization was urbanized. Right? So you have to talk about how it got urbanized throughout the time, nothing else, right? So you don't have to write about the economic development, rather religious beliefs and all, you should stick into the how it was urbanized. That is it, right? So uh, at the beginning, you could give a uh, brief introduction to the Indus Valley. And then now they're asking about the urbanization. Right, so when we talk about the urbanization, the mainly we learned about the uh, town planning, right? So town planning was a huge uh, development under the urbanization, right? So uh, urbanization, not only about the town planning, right? So uh, when we talk about the urbanization, we could further talk to they got urbanized, they were developed due to the agricultural uh, developments economic developments as a result of agricultural developments economic developments they got urbanized right so they are by uh, within the, within my uh, first paragraph i have given introduction to the urbanization right the rise of towns in the indus zone was based on agricultural surplus the making uh, the making of bronze tools various other crafts and widespread trade and commerce this could be identified as first urbanization within the indian history Right. So as a result of these developments, the population level increased uh, during this period due to the increment of the population. As a result of the increment of the population, urbanization was occurred. Right. Right. So the and uh, I have uh, mentioned when, when, whenever I, we, we got similar uh, answers, I have uh, uh, mentioned that uh, the I have referred the uh, other answer here I have within the brackets I have mentioned that uh, uh, describe more about the contribution of agricultural developments and trade for urbanization as the above answer within the above answer we talked about the agricultural development and trade right so within this answer also you could uh, talk about uh, uh, talk a bit about the agricultural developments and trade as we discussed earlier. Right. 
which I have mentioned in earlier, earlier question, question number one. Right. So and also according to the archaeological and literary sources, we could identify when we talk about the urbanization, we could uh, there were four main developing stages within the uh, industrially civilization, pre Harappan stage, early Harappan stage, um, mature Harappan stage and late Harappan stage. Right. So throughout these uh, stages, we could uh, we could see a kind of development. Right, so within the pre Harappan, it, it uh, simply shows us how the civilization was developed or how the civilization was urbanized. Right, so within the pre Harappan stage, uh, they, they were nomadic people and they began to settle and they just commenced their agricultural activities. Right, then during the early Harappan stages, what happened was villages were. Villages were there and they gradually converted to towns by the early Harappan stage. When it comes to the mature Harappan stage, now towns were there within the early Harappan stage. By the mature Harappan stage, what happened was the great cities were emerged, right? Then the uh, and uh, at the uh, end of the day, at the late Harappan stage, what happened was the it was the declining stage, right? So by identifying, by looking at these three mainly three phases, we could see how the uh, civilization was developed throughout their agricultural activities, throughout their trades, by uh, emerging towns into cities. We could see it, how it was urbanized, right? So, and apart from that, when we talk about the urban, uh, urban environment whenever I talk we talk about the urban urban environment industrially civilization had a very good uh, town planning system very good town planning system thereby they uh, they had a uh, very well urbanization uh, uh, urban environment they had a very well uh, urban environment right so when we talk about the urban environment urbanization we learned that under a specific topic, uh, the town planning of the Harappan people, right? So you could uh, uh, describe more about the town planning, right? So one is lines of the grid system, right? So, and they had uh, if, if, uh, the uh, Mohanjadaro and Kalibangan, right? So they were, uh, they, they each had their own citadels and uh, they were built uh, on a high podium with mud bricks. Right, so and uh, with mud brick uh, and the mud bricks, and the, below to that, there were mud big brick houses, right? So, and apart from that, they had a well developed underground drainage system. Apart from that, they had well developed underground drainage system and great bath uh, in Mohanjadaro. Uh, well, uh, apart from that, they had uh, well developed granaries they, ha they had six ma main developed granaries to protect their uh, surplus uh, so the agricultural surplus right so uh, these uh, town planning uh, systems well de described about the uh, 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 urban features of the harappan civilization urban features of the harappan civilization right so that is how we should answer to the question number two, right? So how the, first you need to uh, mention how the agricultural products, how the trade uh, helped to uh, uh, develop the economy of the society, thereby the population increased. And uh, you could uh, mention four stages, pre-Harappan stage, early Harappan stage, mature Harappan stage, and the late Harappan stage, how they gradually uh, developed. And finally, whenever we talk about the urbanization, you should talk, Talk about the especially with the industrial civilization you should talk about the town planning right so the lines of the uh, lines of the grid system uh, they are underground uh, well developed underground drainage systems great bath at mohenjadaro uh, the, they are granaries right so you should talk about those uh, town planning systems Right, so that is about the urbanization of the Indus Valley civilization, right? So always you should answer to the question which they have asked for, nothing else, right? You, can, you, you should not write whatever you know about the topic, rather you should answer the uh, answer to the question what they have asked for, right? What they have asked for, right? So the question number three. 
right? So the question number three is the explain how Aryans established in India in a short period after their invasion, right? So after the Indus Valley decline, right? So Aryans, they were semi-nomadic people, right? So uh, the Aryans started to settle within the India. Right, so the uh, Indus Valley. Here I have uh, started the question with uh, the mentioning the Aryans. You don't have to write the similar answer which I have written here. Rather, just go through the answer, get get the idea, and write them in your own words. Right, right. So the uh, I have mentioned that the uh, within this question, uh, the question is how Aryans established in India in a short period after their invasion. Right, we have to answer that topic, right? So the uh, I uh, I have uh, written the answer like the Aryans were semi-nomadic people, right? So they um, they uh, they before the Aryans, the Indus Valley civilization was there. It was collapsed or it was declined, basically due to natural uh, reasons like natural calamities, climate changes, environment, environmental degradation, and etc. Right, so thereby, after some time, the Aryans invited and the Aryans established within the India, right? So at the very beginning, the uh, if we give a brief introduction to Aryans, they were semi-nomadic people, right? So they initially settled within the valleys of the North, North and West Plains, Right, so their main, main occupation was cattle rearing. The main occupation of the Aryans was cattle rearing. Uh, and uh, they were actually, uh, we learned this fact, right? So if, if you take Aryans, uh, they were a, a group of tough people, right? Aryans were a group of a tough people and fierce and warlike, right? So due to that, they were well skilled and well couraged within the battlefields. Aryans were well skilled and well couraged at the battlefields. And uh, they were dominated by storm god or sky god, right? So due to their uh, capabilities, as they were well skilled and well couraged at the battlefields, what they did was they gradually conquered the uh, uh, India and they became success, successive tribes within the India. And apart from that, the, they had a high amount of high level of mortality due to the dominance of horses, right? So they were well, well uh, capable, well skilled, well couraged at the battlefield. They were uh, very tough people. They were uh, fierce and warlike people. Thereby, they could gradually uh, conquer the uh, conquer the other tribes, and they could become the successive tribes within the India. And apart from that, they had the horses, right? So, due to the fact they had horses, they had a high level of mortality, right? Thereby, they could establish within the India easily. And apart from that, according to archaeological evidences, uh, they, uh, during this period, they had favorable uh, climate changes, conditions, and also they had rich water supplies. If you take Indus River and etc., they had uh, rich Indus, uh, uh, rich uh, water supplies. Thereby, they could establish their tribe very easily. Right, they could establish their uh, tribe very easily. Right, so those are the reasons why the main reason why they could establish easier uh, within the uh, after the invasion was because they were tough and they were well skilled, well capable at the battlefield. So that is why they could uh, establish within the Indi uh, India in a short after a short period of time. Right, so you should mention those facts why they why they were able to established within the India in a very short period of time, right? So that, that is how to answer the question number three, right? So the question number four, explain religious, political, and cultural practices of Aryan based on the Vedic literature, right? So the question number four is religious. So how to answer this question, right? So the... Uh, they within this question it has asked about the uh, Aryan 
right the question is about aryan and the uh, religious political and cultural practices right so when we talk about the aryans uh, we could talk uh, we could divide the aryans into two uh, two groups so based on the periods we could divide them into two right so the early vedic period and the later vedic period right so early vedic period or rig vedic period or and the later vedic period if you take rig early vedic period they had different types of religious political and cultural practices within the later vedic period they had um, different uh, religious political and cultural practices when we compare with the early vedic vedic period right so you thereby what you have to do is you should talk about all those aspects within this question religious religious political and cultural practices of aryan right so the uh, here i have mentioned that the period of aryans or if we take the period of the vedic period we could divide that into two main parts based on the time periods early vedic period and the later vedic period right so now let's look at first let's look at the early vedic period right so the uh, early vedic period political organization political religious and the uh, social life right so the culture when we talk about the cultural practices practices it is all about the social life right so if we take the political organization within the early vedic period you should mention the as we have two uh, two periods you should mention the political social and cultural practices uh, for the early vedic period and later vedic period separately right so because they were very different uh the later vedic period practices were completely different with the early vedic period right so, so if you take the early vedic period uh if you take the political organization uh, there was uh, the uh, small villages where they are called grama and they were uh, ruled by a a uh, person called gramani and uh, the largest and there were some other divisions like like visu jana janapada and etc and the largest political group was janapada and it was ruled by king or rajan right so and there were this is a very uh, uh, brief summary to the political organization uh, to the early vedic period we uh, we learned this in detail right so you could go through the election note and uh, you could go through the answer which i have given and try to write them by your answer by by own your words right by your own words right so the, there were two main councils we learned about this fact again and again within the early vedic period sabha and samiti right so all the people within the uh, this period as uh, within the society uh, were allowed to uh, participate these assemblies including the women right so women had the political rights right so there were uh, egalitarian society there were uh, equal the equality was there egalitarian society was there within the early vedic period if we take the social life or the cultural practices patriarchal family right so the father was the main person of the uh, family so there are by patriarchal society was monogamy was generally practiced right so uh, women were given equal opportunities as men and they are spiritual and intellectual they were uh, they had the uh, opportunities to improve their spiritual and intellectual developments right so when you talk about the social life both men and women wore two pieces of garments upper garments and lower garments and apart from that they cultivated wheat barley milk uh, and milk related other products and they had some uh, pastime so they had a uh, favorite uh, hobbies like chariot racing horse racing dancing music and dance right so uh, the most important fact about the culture uh, was there was no class division within the society as i indicated earlier an egalitarian society was there right so the uh, all the people within the society had their uh, right to choose their occupation right they had their right to choose their occupation they had their right to choose whatever they want to do 
right? So no class division, no caste division was there, right? So the religion, when we talk about the religion, right? So the they uh, worshipped uh, early Vedic uh, uh, period, the people of the early Vedic period, they worshipped the natural forces like earth, fire, uh, wind, rain, and thunder. And what they did was they personified these natural forces into many gods. They personified these natural uh, forces into many gods, right? So the, there were male deities like Indra, Agni, Varuna, and etc. Female deities also were there like uh, Saraswati, Prithvi, and etc. Right? So during the early Vedic period, no temples were there. No temples or idol worships were there. Right? So they uh, there were kind of elaborated rituals and prayers. Uh, and thereby they uh, wanted to have physical protection and material gains, right? So in order to gain, uh, in order to have the, uh, gain the physical protection and material uh, gains, they, uh, uh, they had several elaborated rituals and prayers, right? So that is all about it. That is actually summary to the political uh, social and religious life of the early Vedic period. Now let's look at the later Vedic period, right? So the uh, during the later Vedic period, Aryans further moved into the east during the later Vedic period. If we take the political organization of the early Vedic period, now earlier uh, the uh, uh, Samiti and Sabha, we learned that uh, several uh, uh, Social gatherings were there, Samiti and Sabha, right? So they were disappeared throughout the time. Larger kingdoms were developed, right? So the, uh, and thereby chiefs or the rulers became more powerful, right? So, and the chief, this, uh, the class division was started within the later Vedic period. As a result, the chiefs were advised by the Brahmins. Brahmins tried to uh, dominate the entire society. Right, so several tax were imposed on the normal people. No egalitarian, so the egalitarian society, the concept of the egalitarian was lost. Right, so uh, all were uh, all the people were treated different manner based on their classes. Right, so if you take the social organization, uh, family remained uh, as the basic unit, but uh, the joint families, right, uh, joint families uh, became. Uh, the number of joint families increased, right? So the women, and most importantly, women lost their independence and many restrictions were imposed on women, right? They lost their independence. They started to consider subordinate to men. They started to consider subordinate to women. Uh, men. And during the early Vedic period, Samiti and Sabha was their social gatherings, right? So the women had the chance to uh, attend those Samiti and Sabha, the political organizations as well. But throughout the time, when it comes to the later Vedic period, what happened was women lost their political rights. They were not given the chance to attend the Samiti and Sabha or the social assemblies or social gatherings. Child marriages became common by the end of the uh, later Vedic, during the, when it comes to the later Vedic period. The so, uh, society was divided into hierarchies, Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. Thereby, the, these hierarchies were treated differ differently and the uh, Brahmins tried to dominate the entire society, right? Religion. Right, so the uh, the some gods who were there, almost all the gods who were there within the early Vedic period lost their popularity, uh, uh, and uh, the Prajapati, Vishnu, and Rudra uh, they became prominent during the later Vedic period. And what happened was the uh, the, Brahm the the Brahmanism was uh, the the culture of the Brahmanism or the Brah Brah Brahmins tried to dominate the entire society. Thereby, the yajnas or sac uh, sacrificial offerings and devotional practices for gods were increased. Right, so they were increased comparatively to the early Vedic period. Right, so that is about the. Now this question asked about the religious, political and cultural practices of Aryans, right? So when we talk about the Aryans, we know that there were two ba basic periods, 
early Vedic period and later Vedic period, right? So they had uh, very different uh, types of political, social, and uh, religious uh, conditions. Thereby, when when you have to when when you answer to the question, you have to divide the answer into two, uh, as early Vedic period and later Vedic period, uh, how the early Vedic political organization, social life and religious beliefs are there, then you have to write the, uh, on the other hand, how the, uh, the political, social and religious conditions within the later Vedic period, right? So the fifth question, the uh, clarify the main Brahmanic teachings and practices during the Brah uh, Brahmana period within the India, right? So this is about the Brahmanism. Right, so the uh, question number five and six, actually they are very similar, right? So I have given uh, the uh, points which, which, which you have to include, right? But almost similar, right? The uh, sixth question, it asked about the, uh, show the influence of the Brahmanic authority for the independent social life. And the fifth question is about the main Brahmanic teachings and practices. Right. So if you take the uh, main Brahmanic uh, teachings, uh, they, uh, Brahmanism is all about they believe in one true God and uh, the, the uh, Brahmanism is sacrificed uh, with moksha, liberation, bliss, uh, bliss and uh, education with the Godhead is the main mission. Right. So as a result, what happened was due to the Brahmanism, the society was uh, during the uh, later Vedic period, the Varna system came into appearance. Right. So uh, Brahmins uh, had uh, wanted their, uh, wanted to have their supreme in the society. Uh, they claimed that they mainly claimed the, they tried to dominate the entire society in order to dominate the society that what they did was they uh, claim, claimed that uh, only they, uh, they were the only people who could communicate with the God. They claimed that they, they, they told the other people that they were the only group of people who could communicate with the God. Thereby, they were given an important position within the society. Right. So according to Brahmanism, they believed that God created the universe and in order to uh, seek the blessings. Now, they urged the people, they taught the other people, other groups of the people that the God is the main person within the society. God is the one who created the entire universe. God is the one who created each and every living being to the uh, society and thereby they uh, they offer. in order to seek blessings from the god they uh, offered sacral ceremonies and rituals to the gods right so and uh, they through that they said uh, they dominated the entire society because they claimed that only they, they could have the uh, connection with the gods that they were acted uh, as intermediaries in between the god and the normal people right so the Due to the uh, high amount of dominance within the Brahmanism, a uh, high amount of sacrificial rituals became excessive and normal people had to sacrifice thousands of cattle, uh, they are, uh, the cattle within their fields for this sake, right? So in this in vain immense sacrificial rituals, negatively we learned this, uh, the, uh, due to the thousands, hundreds and thousands of cattle were used for the sacrificial ceremonies. As a result, what happened was the, uh, uh, this affected negatively to the economic development, right? So the, these cattle were used for the economic developments because they were used for cultivational purposes, right? So uh, the uh, food purposes and etc. Right, so due to this uh, immense sac sacrificial uh, ceremonies, what happened was uh, this, ne this negatively affected the uh, economic development of the society. Right, so at what happened uh, at the uh, end of the day was, uh, uh, end of this period was what happened was strong rejection due to, mainly due to these uh, in vain sacrificial ceremonies and due to the uh, caste system, what happened was the strong rejection was made against the Brahmanism. Strong rejection was made against the Brahmanism, right? So the uh, this question asks about, asks about the main Brahmanic teachings and practices. 
right? So they are they basically believed in the uh, God. God created the entire universe. They believed in one true God and the sacrifice with moksha, the liberation, bliss, and uh, unification with the Godhead. That, that, that was their main mission. And uh, if you take their practices, they mainly uh, practiced the uh, Varna system was there. They tried to dominate the entire society. And uh, they uh, practiced several uh, elaborated uh, rituals and sacrificial ceremonies to God. At the end of the day, what happened was people were not happy with these uh, in vain sacrificial ceremonies uh, and offerings. What happened was strong rejection was made against these sacrificial ceremonies, right? So uh, if you take the question number six, uh, it talks about the same facts. Uh, how Brahmic authority uh, or the affected for the independent life, right? So earlier we talked that the Brahmins tried to dominate the entire society, right? The uh, they were the ones who instructed uh, the uh, advice to the uh, Kshatriyas. Even though Kshatriyas ruled the country, Brahmins the one who uh, advised the uh, the Kshatriyas how to rule the country. Thereby they dominated the entire country. Right, so they always try to influence the uh, all the individual lives of the society. Right, so they uh, if we take the final uh, the uh, least social groups shudras. Right, so they 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 were uh, ill treated within the society by the Brahmanism. They were not given any chance to uh, embrace a religion to uh, learn or study. Right, so the and they uh, they determine the occupations of the people, right? So they through their uh, class division, they uh, predetermined the occupations of the people. Thereby, uh, they the Brahmins they entirely dominated the society, right? So you could explain or describe the influence of Brahmic uh, authority to the independent social life in that manner, right? So quite similar answers, uh, the question number five and question number six, right? If you take the question number seven, uh, the uh, clarify the significance of teachings of the Upanishad, right? So Upanishad, if you talk about the Up uh, Upanishad, uh, right, uh, Upanishad, Within this question, if we highlight the uh, important point, clarify the significance of the teachings of the Upanishad tradition, right? Directly asked about the, uh, so the teachings of the Upanishad tradition, right? So you could uh, simply talk about the uh, Upanishad tradition, uh, like it was the, uh, it is the uh, final or culmination part of the Veda. And it basically talks about the spiritual knowledge spiritual knowledge thereby it is known as the higher knowledge right so the knowledge of the self and the transcendental status of the awareness right um, and uh, how the Upanishad was taught uh, it was given to the people who wanted to know right so it was uh, revealed in private only to the selected on uh, uh, need to know basis Right, so the uh, Upanishad reforms movement towards uh, ascetism, right? So it further talks about the uh, strict sense of uh, self-discipline and self-denial, right? So the Upanishadic thinkers believe that uh, believe that extreme ascetic practices could be used to use as the means of escape from the continual reincarnation. Right, so the uh, likewise you could mention more the uh, basic teachings of the Upanishad, right? So uh, and further, Upanishad thinkers uh, uh, think that rewards and punishments work automatically. Rewards and punishments work automatically, right? So. Uh, uh, another important teaching within the Upanishad, Upanishad thinkers offered three parts. Uh, mainly uh, the right action and the right deeds, devotion and renunciation of the world. Right? So through an ascetic life, right? So three parts, what are the three parts? Right action and right deeds, uh, devotion and renunciation of the world through an ascetic life, right? So, and they believed in uh, the extreme, as, as we talked earlier, they believed in extreme self-discipline and self-denial would enable a soul to release from the cycle to unit, unit with the world soul, 
right? So likewise, uh, actually, I don't have to teach anything here because we have talked about the Upanishadic tradition. We talked in detail, right? So within this question, you have to write the main teachings of the Upanishadic tradition, main teachings of the Upanishadic traditions, right? So you don't have to stick into this answer. Rather, you could... Uh, 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 go through the uh, Upanishadic topic and summarize what we learned, main teachings of the Upanishad, right? Right, so the, uh, the, within the uh, first question, uh, sorry, within the question number seven, we talked about uh, the uh, uh, significance of the teachings of Upanishad, Upanishad tradition. And the question number eight, the teachings in the Upanishad tradition, uh, Upanishad are regarded as revolutionary step towards Brahminism, right? So within the seven, question number seven, it was asked, it, it was very simple because uh, we learned that the basic teachings of the Upanishadic tradition and the question number eight, uh, it asked about the teachings of the Upanishadic tradition are regarded as a revolutionary step towards the Brahminism, right? So uh, why was that? Why was the teachings of the Upanishad uh, regarded as the uh, revolutionary step? Right. So, as a entrance to the uh, this question, you could uh, give a uh, give give a brief introduction to the Upanishadic tradition. Right. So, we, uh, we, like like so uh, like number question number seven uh, within the question number seven, we we learned the uh, we talked about the. Uh, basic teachings of the Upanishadic tradition and just give a, a brief introduction to the Upanishadic tradition within the question number eight. Now let's look at why it was regarded as a revolution step, right? So the, if we take the Avedic literature, uh, it consists with four main parts, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atar Veda. And each book, we learned this, right? Each book consisted with Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranikas, and Upanishads, right? Samhitas and Brahmanas belongs to Karmakanda, where, where it talks about the temporal life, excessive ritual practices, sacrificial ceremonies to obtain material gain and personal favors. And Ara, the second part is the uh, Jnana Kanda is about Aranikas and Upanishads. Right, so Aranikas and Upanishads talk about the uh, higher knowledge or the liberating wisdom or the spiritual portion of the religion. Right, so the, within the society, throughout the time, uh, now we'll, uh, throughout Samhitas and Brahmanas, they were much into the sacrificial ceremonies. Right, so, but throughout the time, what happened was society uh, made an excessive reaction or rejection to against these sacrificial ceremonies because thousands and hundreds of cattle, the, the animals and even people were killed as a result of sacrificial ceremonies and people were ill-treated within the society. Due to this rigid caste system, people were uh, fed up with that, thereby a, uh, a strong rejection was made, right? Brahminical order uh, was uh, rejected by the society, right? So due to the uh, introduction of Aranikas and Upanishads, they don't talk, they, they don't talk about the invent sacrificial ceremonies, practices and rituals. Rather, they only concentrated about, to, about the higher knowledge, spiritual advancements. Right? So thereby, people wanted to uh, go away from the sacrificial ceremonies and they wanted to embrace the uh, higher spiritual advancements. Thereby, what happened was the uh, uh, Upanishadic, uh, Upanishadic teachings were well embraced by the people. People wanted to learn uh, and uh, uh, learn more about the Upanishadic or the spiritual advancement, but th thereby they were... Uh, many people were embraced the Upanishadic tradition. Thereby, we could say that Upanishadic tradition are regard, could be regarded as a revolutionary step, right? So likewise, you have to uh, describe the answer, right? So it is very easy. It's not the rocket science, right? Uh, you could easily describe the answer. Right, so question number nine. 
we have still time 10 minutes uh, question number nine uh, it is uh, elucidate uh, the origin of shramana tradition and its fundamental features it's a very direct question origin of shramana tradition and its fundamental features right so we learn that uh, due to the rigid caste system and the sacrificial ceremonies people were dissatisfied with the brahmanic tradition and uh, they wanted to uh, have something more meaningful to the uh, lives meaningful doctrines and uh, doctrines with spiritual advancements thereby the uh, shramanic tradition was appeared within the 6th century bce right so we learned about the six heterodox shramanic traditions contemporary to the buddhism ajivakas lokayadas sanskritavadins ahetavadins and anjanis right so those are examples for the shramanic traditions right so if we take their uh, fundamental features um, almost most of the shramans uh, the uh, ascetics uh, were they lived uh, on arms and uh, in abject penury right so they uh, abstain from the pleasures and comforts uh, and they uh, they led an austere and exemplary life especially they practiced human humanitarian values such mainly compassion to all living beings right so spiritual uh, they start, they wanted to attain spiritual purity through austerities renunciation of desires and to cultivate virtues such as non violence truthfulness non stealing non possession and etc right so those are some of the uh, characteristics of the uh, shramanic ascetics right so if we take about talk about the fundamental features of the shramanic traditions they more emphasized on karma than ritual earlier within the brahmanic tradition they uh, emphasized on rituals not on karma they, they they never believed in karma but when it comes to the shramanic tradition uh, they emphasized on not all but these are the fundamental features right um, they uh, emphasized on karma than rituals they simplified the meaning of truth within the uh, brahmanic period the brahmins never wanted to simplify the truth rather they wanted to uh, claim the fact that only they ha have the ability to understand the doctrine and they never wanted the lower level lower classes of people uh, to understand the doctrine when it comes to the shramanic tradition one of the main fundamental feature is that they they simplify the meaning of truth in order to uh, uh, where anybody within the society could easily grasp and understand. They rejected the caste system and they promoted the social harmony and Shramanic tradition did not believe in divinity of the Vedic pantheons. Right? So the, those are the main features of the Shramanic tradition. Right? Very easy and uh, direct question. Right? The question, the final uh, question is the describe the impact of uh, reverberations of jainism in india during the 6th century bce and it is very similar both the same question elucidate the brief teachings of the jainism and show how it contributed towards the peace and equality right so the uh, here uh, uh, I have answered the question number eleven because both the questions talk about the uh, about the Jainism and its contribute contribution towards the within the uh, ten, uh, question number ten impact of the uh, uh, reverberations of Jainism in India. Question number eleven uh, elucidate the brief teachings of Jainism and uh, show how uh, its contribution towards the peace and uh, equality within the India. Right. So within the uh, question, the question number 10, impact of the Jainism within the India. And if we take the question number 11, the second part is to show the contribution towards the, the peace, the peace and equality within the India. Right. So the question number 10 and the second part of the question number 11 is similar, same. Right. So thereby I have answered the question number 11. And apart from that, Question number 11, we have to talk about the brief teachings of the Jainism, brief teachings of the Jainism and its contribution towards the uh, Indian society, right? So if we take Jainism, 
uh, we have learned that right so you before answering these questions if you can't remember uh, go through the uh, lecture notes which i which we learned and then uh, go 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 through this answer and then write the answer right so jainism uh, <coughs> could be identified as one of the ancient religions in india right so there were 24 main teachers uh, or tirthankaras and uh, the attend uh, the uh, the last teacher to the Jainism was the Mahavira. If we take the main teachings of the Brahmanism, right? So they did not believe in the existence of God and they believed in karma and transmigration of the soul where body dies but soul does not, right? So individuals will be punished or rewarded as for their own karma, right? So they advocate life of austerity and non-violence. Non-violence is one of the major uh, features within the Jainism, right? So Mahavira stressed on equality and did not escape, uh, accept the caste system, right? So he urged that individual may be uh, good or bad according to their, according to his or her actions, but not by the birth. Simply, he rejected the class, uh, caste system, right? So the within the Jain tradition, uh, ascetism was considered as a great uh, length, uh, where starvation, nudity, and self mortification was expounded. Right? So, if we take the uh, uh, giant uh, principle, two main elements were there Jiva and Atma. Right? So, the supreme principle of giant tradition was non violence or ahimsa. Right? So, three guiding, uh, guiding principles are there within the uh, Jainism right belief, right knowledge, and right conduct right so if we take the right conduct there are five main observance uh, under that ahimsa uh, satya uh, asteya uh, aparigraha and brahmacharya right so ahimsa is non-violent satya is truth asteya is not not uh, no stealing not stealing aparigraha is not acquiring property and brahmacharya uh, means existence Right, so those are uh, main uh, the, uh, the the five walls under the right conduct. Right, so the if we take the uh, 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 Jainism, uh, they uh, like Buddhists, they believed in uh, reincarnation, uh, a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Right, so uh, uh, the Jain followers, in order to avoid karma, they practice ahimsa, strict code of non-violence. Violence. The principles of non-violence include doing what do we mean by non-violence? Doing no harm to humans, plants, or plants, or even to animals. Right. So, if we talk about the its uh, uh, the contribution towards the peace and uh, equality, uh, we we'll, uh, within these features also we we'll learn that um, the non-violence was uh, there are one uh, one major point within the non-violence. Right. So they always uh, spoke the truth they never steal right so the uh, uh, they showed the sexual restraint and they uh, did not become attached to worldly thing and uh, they rejected the uh, rigid caste system right so thereby they tried to bring the equality and peace to the society they rejected reject the rigid caste system and thereby they wanted to enhance the peace and equality within the society right so the uh, varna system uh, now earlier within the brahmanic society varna system had uh, rigidified the uh, people uh, within the lower caste and they were given miserable lives but jainism similar very similar to buddhism they practiced non-violence Right, so they never treat uh, ill treated the lower class people. They never accepted the uh, classes. They uh, treated equally all the people within the society. Anyone who wanted to uh, uh, embrace their religion, all were welcomed. All were welcome. Now, within the Brahmanism, Shudras were never allowed to uh, uh, allowed to. Uh, uh, 
even to uh, attend their uh, ceremonies right so but within the like not only jainism but uh, within the jainism and buddhism all the uh, levels of the people were welcome to embrace the religion right so within this question we are talking about the jainism how it uh, gave the equality to the society they all the people within the society were allowed to uh, follow the religion and uh, not only that uh, the uh, women women were given their uh, priority uh, and the uh, all the rights within the society they were, even women were given chance to embrace the religion within the jain tradition right? So that is how the Jainism uh, contributed uh, uh, towards the peace and equality within the society, right? So that uh, those are the answers for question number one to uh, eleven, right? So we have nine more questions remaining. Uh, try to write answers to those questions as well. Um, uh, I will give you the answers for them. But uh, I will give them by next week, like what I did today, right? So I want you to write the answers by your own, right? So don't just uh, read the answers which I send you and stay. Uh, in order to uh, uh, score well within the society, within the exam, you should practice answering. You should practice answering, right? So uh, write the answers again and again and try to memorize them. Right, so the write the answer uh, to the question. Uh, first, highlight the important uh, points of the question. But uh, first, read the question well. Right, read the question well, then understand what they have asked. Then answer uh, answer the question uh, about what they only to the question what they have asked. Right, so no, don't try to. Uh, write uh, any other points only uh, write the answer to the question what they have asked right 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 so that is all about today uh, i will send you the answer but uh, don't uh, uh, stay until i send you the answers write the answers for the next uh, uh, nine questions but i will give you the answers but Try to write the answers by your own. Right. So if you have any questions or problems, email me. I will answer you. Right. So the next class will be our final class, and after that, I will give you uh, your uh, study leave uh, in order to uh, for your studies before the exam. Right. So uh, within our next class, I will discuss the uh, remaining nine questions. Uh, and if you have any questions, as I mentioned earlier just email me right okay okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much good night good night good night good night good night